Hello everyone, my name is Remy Olateru and I'm going to be talking about the solution to this lab. Lab 7.9, create lesson schedule table with foreign key constraints. So let's read the prompt and then we'll go over the solution. So the database contains a horse table with the columns ID and registered name. The database also contains a second table, student table with columns ID, first name and last name. Our objective is to create a third table named lesson schedule with the columns horse ID, student ID, and lesson date time. If a row is deleted from horse, the rows with the same horse ID should be deleted from lesson schedules automatically. Also, if a row is deleted from student, the same student ID should be set to null in lesson schedule automatically. So if we take a look, we already have the two tables given to us. Create horse is table one. Create table horse is table one. And create table student is table two. Our objective is to create a third table with these columns and constraints. So let's get started with that. Let's create a third table named lesson schedule. So let's go down here and let's start up by doing create table. And this creates this um, query creates a table and we want to name it lesson schedule. Inside of this table, we're going to have three columns. The first being horse ID. So let's actually write that down, horse ID. Now, what is the data type for this horse ID? We want the data type to be an integer, but since an integer, since we have many different integer data types, we have a tiny int, small int, medium int, regular int, large int. What, which one is um, the which one is the data type that we actually need for our specific use case? And in this particular case, we want an integer with a range of zero to sixty-five thousand. So, what does that actually mean? So, a tiny int. It, I think it has the, or I know it has the range from zero to two hundred fifty-five. So. We need something slightly larger, and we know that a regular int is eight bytes, and it has a, a very, very large range, somewhere in like the billions range, four billion. We don't need that much, so if we want to be um, efficient or effective in managing our storage, uh, we know that for this particular case, we need something like a small int, which holds about sixty-five thousand plus. Um, numbers right and we also know that we don't need any negative numbers so we know that this data type is also going to be unsigned which is important so let's do that so we can go small int and it's also going to be unsigned right we also know that it will it acts us to that the, um, the horse ID column should not be null, meaning that we, we shouldn't we should not be able to not input a value. We must input a value. So we have to put the not null constraint. And the last constraint it says is that it's actually a foreign key of horse ID. So we'll get back to this later. We'll move on to student ID. Student ID also has an integer with a range of zero to sixty five thousand, so we can actually do the same thing with student ID. So student ID is a small int and it's unsigned. However, it doesn't necessarily say that it should not be null. So we know that student ID can be null, meaning that we don't have to input a student ID. However, we must input a horse ID. That kind of makes sense, right? It seems like this is some sort of business for horses. So you got to have your horses, but if students aren't there, then it can be null, which makes sense in this case. It also specifies that the student ID will also be a foreign key, which specifies uh, the student table. We'll get back to that. The third column is lesson date and time. So let's create that lesson date and time. Lesson date time. Oops. Date time. And in this particular column, it's going to have the data the data type of date time and it's not going to be null. So let's do that. So the data type is date time and it's also not null, meaning that there must be a date and time inputted inside of this column in each value in each row. 
So let's get back to the foreign key constraints. Horse ID is specified that it's going to be a foreign key of horse ID. So let's make sure that we include this in the table. Prior to including this in the table, I'm just going to do a quick run to see if there's anything, if I get any errors. So let's just run it real quick. And it seems like so far um, there are no errors. It says your program produced no, no output um, because they specified that your SQL, SQL codes does not display any results in developer mode. But we know that there, so far there are no errors, which is good. Now let's move on to the foreign key that references horse ID. So we know that we want to create a foreign key. Let's do that. And we can do that by saying foreign key. Oop. Foreign key. And we can specify the name, which is going to be horse ID. And that is going to reference references. References. It's going to reference table. It's oh, actually no. It's going to reference his horse, the horse table, right? The horse table and the specific column that we want that it references is ID. Awesome. Now let's just go ahead and run that. Okay. All right. Um, syntax is very key and making sure you have the absolutely absolute correct syntax is of the utmost importance and we also know that student id is a foreign key of the student or the id in the student column so let's also include that foreign key student id references student ID. Let's see if we have any issues with that. We don't. We are good to go. Okay. Now, now that we have referenced both foreign keys, student ID and horse ID, let's see if it asks us for anything else. It also says that the primary key for lesson schedule is a composite key of horse ID and lesson date and time. So let's specify that as well. And we will actually specify that pr before we specify our foreign keys. So we're gonna say primary key is going to be a composite of lesson, date, time, and horse ID. I believe that's what it said. Yes, it did. Did it, did it in the backwards? I did it backwards, but that should be okay. Um, let's see. Comma. All right, awesome. We're looking good. We're looking great. So the primary key is a composite key of lesson, date, time, and horse ID. Uh, and the foreign keys are horse ID, which references horse, which uh, which references ID in the horse table, and ID with, and ID which references student in the student table. Or excuse me, student ID which references ID in the student table. Okay, so it looks like we have everything that it acts here, but it also gives us two other uh, constraints. It says if if a row is deleted from the horse table, the row with the same horse ID should be deleted from lesson schedules automatically. So what, is, what that means is we need to add a on delete constraint to our horse ID foreign key. So we're going to say on delete because they said if it's deleted, it should be also be deleted. The horse ID should also be deleted. So on the delete or on delete, we want to cascade. And what that does is if um, if a horse is deleted from 
or excuse me, yeah, if a horse is deleted from the horse table, then subsequently what will happen is a horse ID from the lesson schedule table will also be deleted, the row. Now it says if a row is deleted from the student ID, or excuse me, if a row if a row is deleted from student from the student table, the same student ID should be set to null in the lesson schedule automatically. So what that means is if a row in the student table gets deleted, so on delete, the student ID should be set to null. So this in this case, it shouldn't be deleted, but it, it should be set to null. So we want to do set null. Okay, and let's run that and just see if we have any issues. And we do not. So let's let's recap on everything that we've we have done and let's just confirm that we have um, applied everything that it asks for so we created a table called lesson schedule lesson schedule that's check we created a column horse ID with an integer with a range of 0 to 65,000 so we know that's a small int and we know it's also unsigned so small int unsigned yep not null and it's a foreign key which references horse ID so it's not null and it's also a foreign key horse ID which references ID in horse we created a student ID column with an integer of uh, 0 to 65,000 so we also know that's also a small int just like the horse ID check um, right here small int unsigned However, this the student ID is um, doesn't have a not null constraint, so we didn't include that. But it's also a foreign key that references student ID. So it's also a foreign key student ID that references uh, ID in the student table. Check and lesson date time. Uh, so we included that column lesson date time. And the data type is data. Sorry, the data type is date time, and it's also a not null. So those are the that is the constraint on it. So date time is the data type, and not null is the only constraint on it. Check. If a row is deleted from the horse table, the row with the same horse ID should be de should be deleted from the lesson schedule table automatically, and we added that constraint on delete cascade and what cascade does is it, it, it actually deletes the whole row from lesson schedule which is exactly what they're asking for and what we provided then it says if a row is deleted in the student table the same student ID should be set to null in the lesson schedule automatically so when what we did was on delete which means when there's a there has when there's a delete on the student table we want to set student ID to null on the lesson schedule table so it seems like we checked all the boxes on the requirements for this particular particular lab let's go ahead and submit our lab and see if we got 10 out of 10 and it looks like we did get a 10 out of 10 great job guys we successfully created a third table lesson schedule which has a horse ID column a small int data type that is unsigned not null student ID which is also a small integer and it's unsigned since it's all positive integers however it's it doesn't include the not null constraint we created a lesson date time column with a date time data type and this is not null. We created a primary key, which is actually a composite primary key, which consists of lesson date time and horse ID. We created two foreign keys, the first being uh, horse ID, which references the on delete cascade. And we created a third uh, or second foreign key, student ID, which references student ID. And on delete is set to null.